name is Jim, and for a long time I've been wondering how much clamping pressure matters for how strong a glue joint is. So I decided I was going to build a tester and test that, and that's what we're going to do today on... Manjaro. Last week I went through and built this shear tester. So what this thing does is it takes a little sample, a little block of wood like this that's glued together. This one's not glued together. You stick it in here, press down on it with the hydraulic jack. It pushes up on it, and this load cell up here measures how much force I put on it, and it'll break it apart. And then I can record on my little scale here how much pressure it took to break it. So then I'm going to make a whole bunch of those, test them under different clamping pressures, and see how much that actually varies the strength at which the glue joint breaks. So first thing we need to do is make up a whole bunch of samples. So I've got a couple little pieces of pine like this. This is just some regular pine. It's three quarters of an inch thick. I'm going to cut it into one inch strips and then cut it into one and a half inch blocks like these guys here and then I'll overlap them so they have a one inch uh, amount of glue surface area. Then I'm gonna take and put different uh, amounts of pressure on those as I clamp them together. Some I'm gonna just hold together like this until the glue kind of sets a little bit and then just leave it so they basically have no clamping pressure. Some I'm gonna take a weight like this and put it on there. I'm actually gonna put it on two. This is a five pound weight, so that way I'll get about two and a half pounds on each one. Then I'm gonna take a slightly larger weight put it on a couple so that I get about 15 pounds on there. That's about air pressure. So if you're using a vacuum bag, that's about the pressure that you're gonna be putting on uh, per square inch of, of glue up surface. Then I'm gonna use these little spring clamps and put them on. These put about 30 pounds on. And then finally, I'm gonna clamp them down and put about 200 pounds of pressure on them. That's a ton of pressure. That's 200 pounds per square inch. That's way more than you'd ever see in a joint. So this little clamp here does about 240 pounds. So you'd have to put it on just a, a one inch square to get about that much pressure on it. These clamps here do about 500, about the same with these guys here. And this clamp down here does about 330. So if you were just put any one of those on a small glue area, you could get more than that. But most of the time when you're doing a glue up, you don't have just a one inch square area that you're applying the pressure on. It's usually on a much larger surface. So I would say at the maximum that you're probably gonna see in, in normal situations, you're probably not gonna go over hundred pounds per square inch. So 200 should be well behind, beyond that. So we'll test all of those and see just how much of a difference it makes. Making up these coupons is real simple. They're just simple one inch wide blocks of wood. So I've got my table saw set up here to cut one inch long strips. Gonna make a couple of these. You'll notice that these boards don't sit real flat on the table saw. Um, there's a little bit of cup in them. It's just a pine board, but I guess there's a knot in here or something that's making it not be perfectly uh, flat. But fortunately when they are cut down to the short size, it's not gonna make any difference. So once these are cut to width, I'll take them over to the miter saw here. I've got a little stop block cut off and I'll just Cut them down into a uh, little inch and a half blocks. So it's inch and a half length long to allow for the little bit of overlap. So I just make a whole bunch of cuts here. Uh, I gotta be careful because if I pull the saw up while it's still running, the teeth will catch on the little block and throw it. But as long as I keep the, let the saw stop before it, I pull it back up, it's no problem. I've got all my little coupons made up now, and I've color coded them depending on the load that I'm going to put on them. So the ones on the bottom here, I'm going to put 200 pounds on, then 30 pounds, the ones down here about 15 pounds, two and a half pounds, and then just zero pounds basically. I'm just going to squeeze them together and let them sit. So hopefully that'll let us draw a nice curve, or maybe it'll just be a flat line if all the amount of pressure doesn't matter in the slightest. I'm going to have enough coupons here for seven sets so of each load level. I expect there to be a lot of variability from one test to the other, so hopefully that'll be enough that we can really get a decent statistical average of how much uh, force it takes to break each one of these. There's going to be a lot of variation because it's a natural material, not in the most scientific environment here, the amount of glue that I apply, all that stuff is going to be pretty variable, but hopefully with this number of coupons we'll be able to get some good data out of it. If not, I can always go back and make it a whole bunch more up. First up, we've got ones that basically won't have any clamping pressure on them at all. So I'm just gonna put some glue on here. So I am using Type Bond Original Wood Glue. So that's what I'm gonna be using for all the tests. It's gonna be from the same bottle. If I run out of here, I got a whole big gallon of that. So plenty of glue to go around. So I'm just gonna put some glue on one of these surfaces here. Take the other one, smear it around a little, make sure I get good coverage. And then I've got a little alignment mark here. Make sure they're square. and then just give them a good squeeze for a second. 
Okay, I'm gonna go through and do the rest of those. Next up is these two and a half pound ones. So I've got some five pound weights here. I'm gonna put one set under each side of the weight, put it on top, and that'll put about two and a half pounds on each one of these. None of these pressures are gonna be exactly perfect on here. I realize that, but it's good enough, the good as we can do in kind of the shop environment down here. So let's get those done. I'll give these 24 hours to dry and then I'll swap those coupons out and use the next two because I only have two of these weights. Uh, for the odd set there, I'll just use some dummy blocks so it all works out evenly. Next up, we have these coupons here that are about 30 pounds. So these are the Bessie XM5 spring clamps and they put out right about 30 pounds of force. So that's how much I'm going to use for these guys here. Same thing with these, I'll give them 24 hours to dry, then I'll take the clamps off, do the rest of them. These ones here are meant to represent the amount of pressure you get in a vacuum bag, so they're going to be about 14 pounds. If I'm going to do that, it's going to take two coupons, put them like that, put a little bar between them, and then put this big weight on it. Between the two of these, they should weigh, let's see, about 27 and a half. That'll be about 14 pounds per, per uh, coupon here. All right, that looks good, pretty good. You can see it moved around a little on me as I was putting it down. So I tried to get them all lined up as best as I can. I'm gonna leave this on for about 24 hours, take it off and then do the next set and the next set. 200 pounders. So for these, I'm gonna take, glue them up like I have before, put an aluminum plate over a pair of them and then use one of these clamps to clamp it down. I'll be keeping track on my scale here to see just to, uh, till I get about 400 pounds, that should be about 200 pounds per coupon. So the weight of the plate won't matter because it'll all be accounted for in the scale. All right, we're right at about 400 pounds there. I'll let that sit overnight, come back, put the next sample on. Not sure how clearly it comes out on the camera, but there's a little bit of glue squeeze out right here. And so I'm trying to apply load evenly to that face, I'm worried that glue squeeze out's gonna get in the way and kind of unbalance things. So I'm just gonna chisel that out on all these real quick here. So I'll just clean that up. Gone through and chiseled out all that glue squeeze out. The next thing I wanna do is measure all these little blocks. Some of them, I noticed that they aren't exactly one inch wide here. They're you know, five, 10 thou uh, short of that. And then I also noticed that I didn't do a perfect job aligning them at exactly one inch on the length here either. Also, some of them twisted or shifted a little, particularly on the ones that had a lot of clamping load. So I'm gonna measure that. I'm gonna make a little spreadsheet here put all that data in there and then I can calculate exactly how much, um, how many square inches of clamp of glue surface there is. So I can keep them all the same and adjust for that on the final values. So I've got gonna load a coupon in here, break it, record the data and keep going. Let's see how it goes. This is the very first one. This one was just, you know, squeezed together a little bit and left with no weight on it whatsoever. So let's load it up and break it. All right, so that first one broke at 796 pounds. So I'll put that in my spreadsheet. Reset the scale. And try another one. That was only 419. 
409. All right, so that's all the ones that were just kind of squeezed together and left to dry with no clamps. I did notice that a couple of the ones that had the lower failure levels, there seems to be the wood that failed, not the glue. On the ones that the, the higher failure levels, it was actually the glue that failed, which is, so I'm a little surprised at that. I would have expected that at the higher failure levels, you started failing the wood, not the glue, and, and not the other way around. I've got you zoomed in and a little off to the side here so you can see exactly how these are failing. Unfortunately, that means you won't be able to see the, the scale while I'm breaking these, but... So next up, these are going to be ones that just have two and a half pounds per coupon of clamping pressure. That was 408 pounds. That's all the two and a half pound ones tested. Now we're up to the 14 pound ones. All the ones that had clamping pressure were about 14 pounds per square inch were very consistent right around the 500, 470 pound mark. However, there was that one outlier that was only 200 pounds. It looks like a good failure. I'm gonna look at it a little more closely and we'll see at the end. All right, these are the ones that have the 30 pounds of clamping pressure. All right, these are the ones that had a ton of clamping pressure on them, about 200 pounds per block. Let's test these. That's all the samples. I'm gonna go see if I can find all the ones that have bounced around the shop, look at some of the glue surfaces, and crunch all the data on my laptop here, and we can see what the results are. I've taken all the data, made up a pretty graph, done some math on it, and come to come a couple conclusions here. So the way I've, I've looked at all these numbers here is the amount of shear stress that it took to break one of these uh, coupons apart. So the shear stress is the amount of load that was applied divided by the area in contact with glue. So it would be this area here. It's about a square inch. I did measure them all and so it should be, you know, if they were a little off or the, the pieces of wood are a little different sizes, it accounts for all that. So the shear stress that it took to break the ones that I just put some glue on, went like that and put them down, no clamps on them at all, surprisingly was just as good as all the rest of them. It took about 570 PSI on average to break those coupons. There was one data point in there that was over a thousand pounds, um, almost twice what the average was. So I got rid of that data point. I'm not sure if there was something weird going on, if it got hung up somewhere or something like that. So but I threw that data point away. So anyways, those averaged 570 PSI. Then the next ones that had two and a half pounds uh, on top of them, that worked out to an average of 540 pounds. The next ones that had 15 pounds, which is about what you would get if you were using a, a vacuum bag, so it's just the atmospheric pressure, those had 540 PSI. Then the next ones that had 30 pounds, that was 575 PSI. And lastly, the ones with that I clamped down really hard, way more clamping pressure than you would ever have, those were up to 642 PSI. Now, that almost says that you really want to clamp them really hard, but looking at the data, I don't think that's true. I think there were just a couple uh, data points there that were a little bit higher, so that gives it a little bit more um, PSI on those ones that were heavily clamped. I don't think I would draw from this conclusion if you look at them and they're all pretty much at the same level. I think I would conclude that, yeah, it doesn't really matter how much clamping pressure you put on it. If you put just a little bit on it, that's going to be fine. If you put a whole lot on it, that's going to be fine too. So you don't have to worry about squeezing the glue out when you're clamping it. Well, I say that, I really wanted to see if that was at all possible. So I did make up two more coupons here. These ones here, which if you can see, they're a little squished on the side. I actually clamped these so hard that I started squishing the wood as opposed to applying any more clamping pressure. So 
basically the most amount of clamping pressure you could ever put on here. It was equivalent of tightening two of these down almost as hard as I can, worked about, out to about 800, 1,000 pounds of pressure, and that's when the wood started squishing. So I'm gonna test these. We'll see if those have less or if anything else different about them. I only did two because it's a pain to, to glue up these, and I think this is a ridiculous amount of pressure. You should never be putting on so much clamping pressure that you're actually squishing the wood. So let's test these. We'll see if they have any difference. So that one only got up to a max of 344 pounds. And that went to 434 pounds. So it does seem like you can actually put so much clamping pressure on them that you can actually lower the amount of uh, force that your glue is going to provide. But this was a crazy amount of pressure. I actually, some of the, the wood is so compressed here that it's the fibers are starting to break apart. So I don't think I would, you, you would never see that amount of clamping pressure in you know normal usage. You have to be in a very weird situation where maybe you're only gluing a very small area and you're using really big clamps to actually get clamping pressure that that's how, is that high. I'm sure everyone's going to have some complaint about how I ran this test. Either I didn't use enough samples, I didn't use the right wood, I didn't use the right type of glue, I didn't use different types of glue, they don't like the tester that I've got here. Feel free to leave those comments below. If you've got any really helpful suggestions, I'll take them into account and maybe I'll make a second video for this. Um, I do plan on doing a couple other tests with this. I want to t test different types of glue, strength of glue over time, different types of wood. This was all pine. Um, most of these, the, the wood didn't fail, so I'm not sure it particularly matters uh, for the glue strength, what type of wood you're using, but possibly the wood would penetrate better into different types of wood. I also want to test the surface finish. So this was just as planed. It was just the board that I got from the store. Um, wasn't even out of my planer, so it's a, a pretty nice finish but it's also pretty smooth, so maybe there's not enough uh, surface area there for the glue to bite into. But it does seem on most of them there's glue left on both sides. It really seems like the glue sheared itself, not the wood breaking or pulling out of the wood. So anyways, the, this tester, the ASTM uh, document that specifies how this tester should look actually does suggest that you use hard maple. It doesn't require it, but it, that is suggested. So I may try a couple different types of wood, see if there's any difference between the glue strength between the wood. Uh, one thing I did notice was that most of the spec sheets for the wood where I could find a strength, it was a lot higher than what I saw on this. So I'm not sure if that that is in a different wood, it's higher or there's a longer drying time. This was after about 24, 48 hours, depending on the, the sample, which should be plenty. These glues should be their full strength at that time. But Maybe that makes a difference. Maybe it is. Maybe I should have sanded these to, you know, 120 grit or something and to, to give the glue a little bit of uh, a key to work on. Anyways, we'll see if there's a lot of demand for some other type of test or to redo this test with more samples. I thought this was plenty of samples. There is a lot of scatter in this data, um, but of course, more samples is always better. It does take a lot more time to do, though. So if you've got any comments, want me to do something else, leave them below, and I'll see you next time.